the grass spider. The common name for this spider and one of the more common species you'll find out here. On a crisp, dewy morning, go look at your bushes and grass, and you'll see their webs all over your yard. Just going to your garden or running in the yard and these spiders are all around you. But with them being within arm's reach, and being so close to home, are they something you need to worry about? Well, we'll cover that. Today we're going to cover if they're dangerous or not, their anatomy, and what can happen if you catch a bite. So without further ado, let's get to the video. The grass spider is a species of Agelenopsis and in the family of Agelenidae. The sizes of different species will vary, but the spider will be around three-fourths of an inch measuring the body, the legs do not get measured. This spider can come in a variety of colors from yellow, to brown, to gray, and to ivory. The grass spider is also known as the funnel web or the funnel weaver spider. Though it is a funnel web, it is not the only spider to do so. Agelenidae is the family for funnel weavers, and it's a rather extensive family. This family of spider is overwhelmingly harmless to humans, outside of a few species such as the hobo spider. Also note, though these are funnel web spiders, these are an entirely different group of spiders than the Australian funnel webs. Our funnel web spiders are araniomorphs, meaning they are true or modern spiders. Australian funnel web spiders are megalomorphs, meaning primitive spiders. There are some key differences between the two kinds of spiders, but there are two easily recognizable ones that most people have probably seen. Truer modern spiders have fangs that move in a scissor-like or sideways motion. Some of our most common and recognizable species are true spiders. As previously mentioned, the grass spider and other funnel webs, jumping spiders, cobweb spiders, they're the ones that make the webs in the corner of your room, Wolf spiders, garden spiders, and crab spiders are just a handful of examples of araniomorphs. Primitive spiders have the old-school downward-facing fangs, similar to a snake. When these spiders feel threatened, they'll actually lift their front legs and fangs into the air. Not only is this stance a warning, but megalomorphs can't move their fangs like how a true spider can. They'll actually strike their fangs down from this pose as well. Some examples of megalomorphs are Australian funnel web spiders like the Sydney funnel web, trapdoor spiders, and arguably the most famous or infamous arachnids in the world, tarantulas. The second identifiable difference between these types of spiders is their use of silk. All spiders make silk, but not all spiders make webs. A long, long time ago, spiders didn't make webs at all. Spiders would seek refuge in burrows, which they made out of silk, and some spiders would actually make trap doors. Though some spiders use silk to catch prey, most used it as a hide, and as an alert system that if food was nearby, they would come out and capture it. Sometime between 200 to 250 million years ago, true spiders separated from primitive spiders and started using silk to make webs, and they developed sticky silk. Though viscid silk, or sticky silk, and or webs are exclusive to true spiders, there's still plenty of crossover between the two types of spiders that can make it confusing. For example, the wolf spider is a true spider, yet it doesn't make a web and it hunts its prey, similar to a primitive spider. It's best to respect these arachnids at a distance if you're unsure about what you're dealing with. There's actually a third kind of spider, with a name I'm not too sure how to pronounce, we're going to give it our best shot. Misotheli, misotheli, maybe. I'm not fluent in Latin or ancient Greek. Anyways, they're even more ancient than primitive spiders. However, you will really only find them in parts of Asia and Sumatra.
The anatomy between insects and arachnids is the way to identify between the two. Meaning, insects only have three body segments and arachnids only have two. An insect body consists of a head, thorax, and abdomen, while the arachnid has a cephalothorax, which means the head and thorax are fused, and an abdomen. The grass spider anatomy is like most other spiders, and we'll cover that starting from the front of the spider. The pedipalps, though they look like legs, are basically little antennas. The pedipalps actually allow the spider to grab prey and even taste their food. Obviously it has eight legs, and the legs actually have their own sensors that allow the spider to taste and smell as well. Moving up from the legs, you have the cephalothorax and the abdomen. The cephalothorax consists of vitals like the brain, stomach, and esophagus, and the abdomen consists of vitals like the heart, silk glands, lung, and all of the spider's reproductive care. Towards the back of the abdomen are the spinnerets. The spinnerets are where the spider will actually spin silk out to make a web if making webs is applicable to that species. As previously mentioned, the grass spider is a funnel web or funnel weaver spider. That means the web won't look like your stereotypical spider web that you may see in your garden or other areas. The grass spider's web will be more horizontal over an area, and there will be a funnel or tube towards the back of the web. Their webs can cover a tiny area or several square feet. On top of the sheet and funnel, this spider also makes kind of a net around the top of its web. Their webs aren't sticky like a lot of other kinds of spiders, but the netting around the web does wrap around the insect or its leg, ensnaring it. The spider hangs out in its funnel and will come out to bite its prey, neutralizing it in a handful of seconds before the spider brings its food into the funnel and eats. The primary diet of this spider is really any unfortunate insect that gets entangled in the web. Again, as mentioned prior, a vast majority of the species in the Agelenidae family are harmless to humans, and that includes the grass spider. The bites from the spider have been known to cause pain, redness, swelling, and itchiness, and can last for up to 10 days, but the average at most is usually like a handful of days. However, there are no serious consequences from this bite. Spiders are not eager to bite humans, contrary to popular belief that there's some serial killer waiting in the dark to get you. Getting bit by a spider is not as common as you may think, and a lot of times, spiders get blamed for bites from other insects. If you knew how many spiders lived around your home at any given time, especially this spider, you would know that the spider isn't dangerous. On a nice summer night, go into your yard holding a flashlight up by your nose and shine the light towards the grass. The grass spider's eyes are reflective and will shine the light back to you, and you may not be excited to see how many little reflections you see, especially if you live by a forest or water. I'm going to show a clip of a grass spider crawling on my bare hand and arm. <laughs> I want to show everyone that these arachnids really don't care about humans, and as long as I'm not making the spider feel threatened, and as long as she has a means of escape, receiving a bite is a pretty low chance. Before I let her crawl on my hand, let's just get another look at the spider. I particularly like this shot because it gives us a decent look at a couple of things. We can clearly see the pedipalps in the front of the spider. As mentioned during the anatomy section, the pedipalps are not legs, though they look like tiny legs. I like how we can get a good look at the very defined spinnerets. Spinnerets are a good way to differentiate between true primitive and even ancient spiders as more defined spinnerets came with more intricate silk use. This spider comes in a lot of colors, but those two vertical black lines running parallel down the cephalothorax make a lot of people mistake this spider for the wolf spider. There are many similarities, but a couple of quick differences should help you quickly identify which spider you're dealing with. The spinnerets on the grass spider are more pronounced than on the wolf. Again, the wolf spider doesn't make webs, while the grass spider does. 
Another great identifier, if you're feeling courageous enough, are the eyes. Both have similar eye placement, but the wolf spider has two very large eyes right in the front. All right, All right here we go. She's on the way. She's clearly hesitant at first, but she gets over that pretty quick. She's trying to figure out what I am through a couple of senses. We covered in the anatomy section how the pedipalps are like little antenna. They have sensory glands that allow them to taste and smell, but those sensory glands are also present in her legs, allowing her to taste and smell through them as well. Spiders are pretty cool little arachnids. I tried several times to talk to the camera while the spider was crawling on me, but we kept having bloopers where she kept falling off my hands and arms, and you're going to see one right here. L. You might be thinking I'm crazy for letting the spider crawl on me, but like I said, folks, the bite's not severe, so I'm not really worried even if it does bite me, and it's just crawling around looking for a place I would assume that it feels comfortable. Looks like it found one right there on my thumb. Good for her. Spider bites are relatively rare compared to what people think. If you find yourself in a situation where a spider is crawling on you, disobey natural law to freak out. Just remain calm, and as long as the spider doesn't feel threatened, you shouldn't be bit. That means give the spider a means of escape. Slowly place your hand on an object to let the spider crawl onto said object, or have an object to place in front of the spider for the spider to crawl onto. Don't place pressure on the spider's body. Rule number one, folks, don't make an insect or an animal feel like it's being attacked and now it has to defend itself. That is a surefire way to get bit. Another one, don't violently shake your hand or body to get the spider off you. As much as you may dislike or hate spiders, remember they are just as afraid of us and you don't want to get bit. You want to stay calm to try to keep the spider calm. I say this because you'll occasionally see the spider inside the house, and I just want you to know it's nothing to be afraid of. Just grab a piece of paper, or any object really, let it crawl on that object and just take it back outside. Speaking of going back outside, let's get this spider back in my acrylic jar, and let's let her loose. Now that we're letting her loose, that's where we're going to end the episode. This is going to be an ongoing theme in these videos, but hopefully you see these spiders as harmless creatures that are just helping you out with a ton of insects. Insects and arachnids may look scary, but keep in mind that a vast majority of them are harmless. Thank you for stopping by. If you like the content, drop a like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video. Bye folks, and Happy New Year!